Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear people watching my video this afternoon or evening or morning, whatever time it is for you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> okay, so it might not actually be your birthday, but that is what we are going to look at today. We are going to tap in to your higher self and find out what your higher self hopes you get for your next birthday. To uh, lead you into your readings today, I am going to be using Vanessa Samina's Wild Muse Oracle deck. Um, but before I pull the cards to set up your three groups, I want to take a second to say thank you guys for helping me grow my channel. I just started posting regularly on this channel of about, uh, I want to say two months ago. And I have in 20, in the past 28 days have over 2000 views, right? And my subscriber count has more than doubled. It's actually almost tripled. So I wanted to take a second to thank you guys for, uh, commenting, liking, subscribing, and sharing. That all has really, um, helped with the growth of the channel. And it just feels good for me to know that you are out there. Okay. Now back to you. Let's find out. Which card is bringing group one into their reading today? All right. Group one, you guys got Know Your Worth. Oh, look how beautiful that is. Isn't that a gorgeous card? Group two, you guys are going to be led into your reading with Fighting Spirit. Hmm. Interesting. For your birthday, huh? Okay. Okay. And for group three, you guys are being led into your reading. Oh, nope, that was like six cards. Come on. Group three, you guys are being led into your reading by Beauty Sleep. <laughs> wow. Maybe your higher self is like, you need to rest on your birthday, girl. You know what? That is quite, quite possible because we do the most nowadays, don't we? We are like going at it all the time. Okay, everybody. Take a second. Oh, wait, there's more. <laughs> but wait, there's more. I also wanted to give uh, those of you who like to pick with crystals the option to choose based on the crystals above each of the three cards. All right. So here we have my selenite wand, which I love. And here we have for group two, we have my protection pack. Um, in the protection pack is tiger's eye, tiger iron, uh, clear quartz, Black obsidian, black tourmaline, and amethyst. Is that an amethyst? I think that's an amethyst. Yes. And then uh, for group three, you guys have rose quartz. So again, group one, it's a selenite wand. Group two, it's my protection pack. And group three, you guys have rose quartz. Take a second. Take a look. I'll be quiet for the next few uh, moments and choose your reading. You will find the timestamps to get you there below this video. Hi, group one. Okay, you guys were led into your reading by uh, the Know Your Worth card and the Selenite wand. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Selenite, it's got a couple of really wonderful uh, mystical properties. One being the cleansing of negative energies from yourself and any other objects you own, including other crystals. Um, and the second is, well, actually, I and that's primarily it. I don't know why I said two. I guess I was thinking of those as two separate things. Energies off of you as well as energies off of objects. Um, if there's more, I'm just not familiar with it. Um, but if you know more, please, you know, tell me, inform me, teach me. Okay, you guys, <clears throat> we are taking a look at what your higher self would like you to receive for your next birthday. Now, your birthday may be coming up this month at the time that this video is going to be posted. It's going to be March. So you might have a March birthday. Um, or you might be someone whose birthday has already passed, right? But you can still get good ideas now for what you can do for the next time your birthday comes. You know, here's the good thing about your birthday. It comes every year, right? At least once a, at least once a year, Sean. Really? No, 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 no. Only once a year, but every year. Okay, so we are going to uh, ask group one's higher self 
What is it that you hope group one gets for their birthday? What does your higher self want you to receive for your birthday this year? Okay, we have the hangman. What does your higher self want you to receive for your birthday this year? You got ten of cups. What does your higher self want you to receive for your birthday this year? You got Ace of Swords. Hmm. What does your higher self... Oh, Six of Cups. Well, this is going in a slightly different direction than what I thought a birthday reading would be. But I'm just going to give you what I see here in the cards. And you know, what's interesting about it is it actually fits so well with the know your worth card. So what your higher self would like for you to receive for your birthday is reconciliation. Reconciliation. I'm getting that there um, is someone, possibly many someones with whom you have been um, struggling in your connection with each other. And, you know, I said reconciliation, but actually what, yeah, no, it's reconciliation. Uh, but it starts with forgiveness. Okay. The first thing that's coming up here is that you guys need to talk. You need to talk. You need to have a, a big conversation. I'm feeling that for the majority of the people who uh, got these cards, say the majority of you, this, oops, I knocked down my selenite one. Um, the majority of you in this group, I'm getting that it is a, um, a familial connection. It's, it's someone, it's at least a person in your family, possible several people in your family. Now, this could be your family of origin, or it could be the family that you've already created with a spouse and children of your own. Um, I'm getting the sense that for many of you, it is a long time or it's, it's been a long time. It's a long term, um, division, separation, um, anger, hurt that has kept you guys from from being in connection with each other, being close to each other, loving each other. Um, I'm not feeling as though this is something like, I'm not feeling as though this has anything to do with abuse or severe mistreatment, but more along the lines of um, a misunderstanding that happened. And so there's a perspective change that either needed to take place um, so that this kind of misunderstanding doesn't happen again in the future, or that there is a perspective change that has come as a result of you guys taking the time apart from one another. Um, and what was initially, oh, you know, just a, a, a small hurt. I'm not trying to trivialize anybody's pain, but like a small hurt or a small misunderstanding. Uh, it did trigger in you or the persons with whom you have been on the outs in, in, in somebody, um, in one of you, it triggered an old wound, an old hurt. So the actual infraction between you and the person that you are being um, guided to reconcile with, I'm going to say in time for your birthday, as opposed to just on your birthday, so that you guys can celebrate this birthday together, right? Um, they, the, the initial misunderstanding, miscommunication, whatever it was, it it wasn't something that should have ended the connection, ended the relationship or put you guys uh, at odds with each other or, you know, um, made it so that you're not speaking and you haven't been speaking now for quite some time. Whether this is a, a family situation, which is what I'm getting that it is for the majority of you or someone who was like family to you, like a close friend. 
but it kept, you didn't, you didn't, you guys weren't able to see eye to eye around the issue. And because of that, neither of you was able to see the other's perspective. I'm getting the sense that for one of you, that was about stubbornness. And for the other one of you, it was a hundred percent about just confusion, not understanding, not getting it. But the thing about someone else's pain is that we don't have to get it. We don't have to understand someone else's pain, right? What we should do, hopefully can do, because some people can't, is have empathy for them or just give, and, and sometimes empathy just looks like just giving them the space to have that pain without trying to tell them that they shouldn't feel that way or give them ideas on how to get over it or just tell them cruelly get over it, you know? And so this misunderstanding or miscommunication, this small, small slight it triggered a very deep, very old pain in either you or the other party. And because of that, it became bigger than it it needed to be. And the guidance that I'm getting for you today is, first of all, that you both, you love each other so much. There's so much actual, real, true love here. Again, whether this is a member of your family or it is someone that uh, was like family to you, like a good friend, and um, that the time has come to reconcile this. And it might be, I feel like it, you're going to have to be in this scenario. It's, it looks like your guidance is that you're going to have to be the bigger person here. And I feel like, you know, actually, I want to take that back because I feel like just even just using that kind of language is judgy. And I don't think it can lead to true reconciliation if you go into it thinking, I'm doing the right thing. I'm better than you because of, no, no. So I'm going to say it differently, okay? More along the lines of, um, be the one to take the first step. It's okay if it looks like you missed them more. Who cares? You both miss each other, right? But with you getting hanged, man, and this being your reading, it's you that's to have the perspective shift about the scenario. It's you that is to um, make space for the other person's side, make space for their reality, make space for whatever it is that has hurt them, whether it was, you know, and it might even be that you don't know what hurt them. You know, y'all were talking and then one minute they blew up at you and then you didn't talk for weeks, months, years. I feel like it's more along the lines of months or years for the, the majority of you who chose this this group. Um, or if it was the other way around, they triggered you and it made you blow up and it made you pull away, right? And... You're entitled to your pain. But what I feel you're being told here is to not let the pain define you, not let it dictate your life. And for those of you for whom it has been, we, uh, sorry, months or years, there has been growth in you. And maybe you already have quite naturally a changed perspective. Maybe there was some growing up that needed to happen, you know? And that which was so hurtful before, it's not, it's not defining you anymore. And you can be the one to create this reconciliation. You can be the one to initiate this, this communication that needs to happen between the two of you. And, you know, remember your card that led you in today is know your worth. Vanessa Samina's, uh, Know Your Worth card from her Wild Muse Oracle deck. So what this says to me is that you're being told whether that person, you know, that you fell out with or people, if it was like, you know, all of your family, that kind of scenario, or all of your friends, you know, even if they haven't reached out to you, that doesn't mean they don't love you. 
It means there's something hindering them. There's a block within them. Everybody has their history. All of us have some pain and some of us set out to heal it, grow, learn from it. Others don't. And sometimes it can dictate, it does dictate what it is they're able to do, what it is they're willing to do. So with the Know Your Worth card, I am feeling that you're being told you definitely still have value to this person and you've had value to this person the entire time, even if they couldn't uh, reach out to you and fix this situation. I'm also getting for some of you with this Know Your Worth card, it is a reminder to you to know your worth to yourself. And with that, doesn't like so a lot of times we'll take this idea of knowing your worth to mean, you know what? I know my worth. I don't have to deal with nothing. I don't have to put up with this from you. Okay. Okay. You can feel that way, you know? And there are times when it is absolutely right to feel that way. And there are times where it might be like a a matter of survival (laughs) to feel that way. But I feel here that what it means, in addition to what I've already talked about, knowing your worth to the other person, is knowing your worth to yourself in the sense that if you love them, let them back in because they hold value to you. You value them and you're um, allowing them back into your life will be a gift to you from you because you miss them and you want them there. And you miss the times that you guys had together. And so you can give yourself this present. You are worth that. You are worth making yourself happy. Be on your own side. This is like my favorite thing to say nowadays. I was just talking to my sister the other day and I said it to her. I'm the, for those of you who, who actually, I don't know that there's ever been a reason for me to mention this in the tarot videos, uh, but I am, I'm a big sister, which is why I oftentimes have big sister energy. I have two younger sisters, one that's six years younger than me and one that's 10 years younger than me. And I had the pleasure of speaking with one recently about something that she's going through. And I just had to remind her to be on her own side. And being on your own side doesn't always mean having to cut people off. Sometimes being on your own side could be giving yourself permission to let people in. Even in situations where there hasn't been an argument or a fight or a problem, uh, you know, like that person you've been crushing on, Know your worth. Let them in. Invite them to be a part of your sphere. Be like, hey, you, I like you. Come over here. Let's talk. (laughs) Give me a kiss. (laughs) All right. All right. All right. All right. Anyway, (laughs) back to you and your birthday. So the message that, um, wow, this is, and I just, you know, I didn't know what we'd be getting when I pulled for this today, but this, whoa, mine blown, right? Reconciliation. Give yourself the gift of your friend again, your higher self, y'all. This isn't coming from me. This is coming from your higher self. Your higher self wants you to reconcile this relationship so you can have this person back in your life again. And you guys can, hopefully, if you do it in time, celebrate your next birthday together. All right, group one, that's what I have for you today. I, oh, wait, no, no, no. I'm sorry, I forgot. I also wanted to pull for you from the Believe in Your Own Magic Oracle. I hope I don't forget with the next two groups. Oh, all of my stuff is falling today. Sean Wilson. Okay. Anyway, all right. Let's uh, grab a quick, a quick message for you from the Believe in Your Own Magic Oracle. All right, we got, you deserve sugar, not salt. How well does that fit with know your worth? You deserve sugar, not salt. So, hey, don't be salty. (laughs) Don't be salty about Sean telling you to reconcile and forgive. Don't be salty about this person and the situation that y'all had. You know you miss them, okay? 
This came up for you today because you miss what you guys had together. Let yourself go back to the sweetness of that relationship. And listen, remember, the relationship will be different because there has been time that's passed. And you've both, hopefully both, at least you have grown. I know you have. I know you have. And the reason why I know you've grown is because you got the hangman. Hangman is about, you know, many things. But I feel here in this reading in particular, it's about your shifting of perspective, your change of perspective from where you were before when the falling out happened to where you are now. Look at that. And the peace around this dude, y'all. And when you approach this person again, and when you start up this relationship or rekindle this, this friendship, this relationship, whatever it was, do it from a place of knowing your worth and that you deserve sugar. You don't have to assume there's going to be a problem. Go in assuming that you are going to be received kindly. Know that you have been missed. You have been missed. Because you are loved, very greatly loved by this person. <gasps> okay, you guys, now that's... Oh, I hit the camera. Y'all, I'm a mess. Basically, I need a bigger place. But anyway, <laughs> that's what I have for you today, group one. Thank you for being here and I will see you in my next one. <laughs> hey, 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 group two. I am... Wait, that's four. Anyway, hey group two, I am very excited for your reading as you can tell. Um, uh, I just had a really great one with group one and I'm looking forward to continuing the wonder of what we're doing with you today. So we are going to be uh, tapping into your higher self. Sorry guys, I didn't realize I was shaking my table so much. Um, your higher self to find out what your higher self would like you to receive for your next birthday. Now, you might have a birthday coming up now. This is the top of March, or it may be that your birthday has already passed for this year and uh, you're going to get some insights in what your higher self would like you to get for your next birthday or receive on your next birthday. So let's take a look and see what comes up. You guys were guided in today by the Fighting Spirit card from Vanessa Samayana's Wild Muse Oracle deck, as well as my protection pack, which is full of uh, crystals to help ward off negative energy, crystals and stones to help ward off negative energy. So that's clear quartz, tiger's eye, tiger iron, black obsidian, um, uh, black tourmaline, <laughs> and amethyst. But back to you. What does group two's higher self hope they receive for their next birthday? All right, your first card is the moon. Hmm. The moon. Interesting beginning. Your second card is the star. <laughs> okay. Oof. Wow, I'm getting chills. Nope, it's not chills. It's like butterflies, butterflies. I'm getting butterflies in my stomach. Your third card is Page of Pentacles. Hmm. Okay. The moon, the star, Page of Pentacles. What does group two's higher self hope they receive? For their next birthday. Group two of two's higher self. This one wants to be here. Nine of wands. Wow. Okay. You guys got the moon, the page of pentacles. Sorry, the moon, the star. Page of pentacles. And nine of wands. So the first thing that is coming to me, looking at the cards you received here, is um, this is something that's been a secret desire of yours. It may, and I'm getting the sense that it's not just that others don't know it's something that you want. But 
almost like this is going to be news to you. <laughs> um, you. You know how like sometimes like if someone gives you something, you don't even know. You, how do I put it? Okay. There's this saying, right? Um, you don't know what you don't know. You know, and sometimes someone giving you something can make you go, oh, yeah, I didn't know I needed that or I didn't know I wanted that. But, oh, I never thought about getting that for myself. But I love it. That kind of thing. That's what I feel like is going on here for you guys. There's something this gift is or the thing that you're going to receive for your birthday is something that you might not even have an awareness of wanting for yourself, but your higher self who knows you on the deepest level, your higher self that knows you on the deepest level, he or she, the majority of my viewers are women, but some of the dudes are out there. Hey dudes, uh, knows this to be something that would be good for you. Something that you really want. Um, and along with the fact that it is not something that you've had before, it's something It'll be a new experience for you to have it. It really focuses on bringing out something about yourself where you truly get to um, shine or um, stand out. I have I, the sense that I'm getting, and I am going to pull more cards. I feel like I need to pull more cards for you guys. Is that it's, it's an activity. It's doing something that you haven't done before, as opposed to having something. And I'm also getting that. I'm, like the word vacation keeps, I keep hearing the word vacation or getaway, uh, removal. It's like, it's, it's very needed. Um, like you've been on a path for a very long time. You've been very focused on work, on your work is what I'm getting. Um, now that work could be your actual career or it could be a project or something that you've been building on building towards. But you've been in, in efforting energy a lot. And do energy. Um, not quite survival mode. I'm not getting the sense that you have been struggling with money, though some of you may have been struggling to meet your needs, but you've been going at whatever it is you've been doing as though you are in survival mode. There's been like a, a very, like there's just hyper focus on something that is efforting, something that feels more like work then it does like play. And even if it started off as a passion project or started off as play or something that you um, were doing, maybe as I'm not getting hobby, but like um, maybe like as a side hustle or a, um, you know, like maybe even on a volunteer level or something where there's a vision, a passion attached to a cause, something attached to what you believe in. And it wasn't your means for making money, but you being you with the energy that you bring to things or maybe the circumstances around it with the people that you've been dealing with as you work on this thing has turned it into being like a job. So again, for some of you in this group, it is definitely that it's been a hyper focus on work or something that you were trying to build or create, you know? Um, and then for others, it's something that was supposed to be a distraction from that, but it still turned into feeling like work, feeling like a job. And like, like look at their focus here, you guys, like both of these guys, right? She's clearly focused on money. 
Got that. But look at the intensity of that gaze and look at the intensity on him. And I feel like this is saying not me like I already covered some of what I feel like these two cards are saying in regards to like the work part of it. But then also like these two people almost couldn't be more opposite if they tried. One's male, one's female. Sorry, I did that backwards. <laughs> one's male, one's female. You know, one is clearly melanated like me, a.k.a. black. Um, and the other one I feel is probably representative of a Caucasian, though she could also be representative of um, someone of Latin descent um, or Hispanic. But um, and then, you know, he's indoors, she's outdoors, you know, and you've got this one feels like a creative person is what I'm getting at. And this one feels like someone who might have more traditional work that they do. And so I feel that those two cards coming up in this way is, is saying that, you know, first of all, first of all, that it is for those of you who have traditional work and, and you've been focused on work and it's this, 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 this. And then also those of you who do, you know, less traditional work or, or less uh, common work. Um, you might be a writer. You might be um, some other form of artist or creator, you know. Um, but, and then in addition to those, that which was supposed to be a passion turning into work, turning into feeling like work. So for your birthday... The guidance that you are getting. Oh, yes. And then look, you guys, we had fighting spirit is the card that brought you in. So you're just, you know, someone out there might tell me that I'm, I'm wrong. And so maybe what I'm about to say doesn't, you know, pertain to you. Again, this is a general reading for the collective. So take what resonates, leave the rest behind for someone who can use it. But, um, fighting spirit, you know, I feel makes it feels like these are doer you guys are doer types. You get shit done, you know. Whether you want to or not, it's it's the way you are. You may not have actually been that way at well, nobody's that way at birth, but that might not even be your nature. I'm getting the sense that some again, you know, I I talked about survival mode a second ago. I'm getting the sense that some of you guys Maybe at some point we're in survival mode and now your situation has improved. It is better, but you are still in that energy and you still approach things as though they are urgent or they are life and or death or they will make or break you or they matter so much or that your identity, your sense of self is attached to how well that effort or that energy goes. Uh, you have a fighter's nature, either because you were born with it or because unfortunate circumstances in your life and unfortunate is too, I feel, light a word for what I mean. For some of you, catastrophic. For some of you, devastating. For some of you, traumatic circumstances in your life made you become a fighter. And that fighting spirit needs a little downtime. Okay, that fighting spirit needs the focus to be on you, not on the endeavors. And you might feel as though achievement makes you feel good about yourself or achievement is what you need. And I'm not saying that it's not. I completely can. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not resonate. I try not to say that because I feel like that word gets overused in the tarot community. <laughs> but um, relate, relate to the idea of getting your sense of self or your sense of um, worthiness from achievement. I, I get it. I get that. But uh, what your higher self is saying <clears throat> Is there is more to you than just achieving and there is more to you than just earning. And what you need is a focus on you. That's actually about you and not focus on what you can do or what you have done or what you plan to do. 
but a focus on you, the actual physical, emotional, spiritual, and psychological you. So I feel like you're getting a message here for uh, rest and rejuvenation. But I did say I was going to pull a couple more cards around this or at least one more card. We'll see. I might not need a couple, maybe just one, just so I can give you guys a little bit more insight into this. But yeah, I feel like I feel like it's pretty clear that focus for your birthday, not, it's not saying, you know, your higher self is not saying you have to change your whole entire way of being and moving through the universe. I don't think that's the message that you're getting, but that, cause our, our focus today is, you know, what your higher self wants you to receive for your birthday. And I feel that the answer to that is, uh, let go of work, let go of efforting, let go on trying to get the thing done, whatever the thing is. Hey, for some of you, it might be the care and feeding of your family. It may not be related to work outside of the home or a creative project. It may be the kind of focus, energy and drive it takes to keep a freaking household running. I said freaking, I wonder why. Cause y'all, you know, if you've watched my channel before, you know, I'm not, I don't shy away from the F word. But I did just now, probably because we were talking about moms and there's like this, you know, reverence for moms thing that's bred into our society. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, so you might be someone who doesn't work outside of the home that the work that you do is within that house. And the um, message for you there is the same. For your birthday, go be the star. Don't cook nobody nothing. Don't pick them up from nowhere. <laughs> Don't do a thing that's not for you on your birthday. And the stuff that you do for you on your birthday, let it be. Be sure to balance it out. See, one of the things about the star card, particularly, you know, the depictions of it that are based on the Rider Waite Smith tarot deck is that She's got one foot on the earth and one foot in the water that represents balance. And then here, you know, pouring water out from both sides of the, of, of her body. Her right hand is pouring out water and her left hand is pouring out water. There's balance in this card. There's balance represented, I should say, represented in this card because there, there are some asymmetrical things in this card as well. But anyway, um, and the stars in this particular depiction of the star card, they are eight point stars, which you wouldn't think that eight signifies balance. You know, you would think that we, I mean, I guess, yeah, I guess you would. I don't know why I said that. For some reason, I was thinking that you would need an odd number for balance, but no, even makes more sense. So forget that last thing I said. But, you know, you've got three prongs here, three points here. One at the top and one at the bottom, this balance. And so I said all of that just to make the point that um, for you, I feel that the guidance group too, I feel that the guidance is when you do this focusing on yourself for your birthday, when you do this self-care for your birthday, to remember to uh, do something for each of the aspects of yourself, okay? Don't be like, oh, I'm going out with my girls and we're going to get drunk tonight, be the only thing you do for your birthday. That takes care of your social side, your emotional side, possibly kind of, kind of emotional, you know, not to be judgy, but I don't know how much it, you know, helps your emotional side to overindulge in the alcohols. But my point is the social side, right? That's your emotional side, hanging with your girls, hanging with your, your boys, your friends. Um, so that's one part of you for your birthday. But then also, you know, what is the stuff that, what is something you can do for your uh, psychological side? What is something that you can do for your physical self? And, you know, probably not just joining a gym or signing up for a class, but like actually physically do something, even if you don't revisit it later for the birthday, for that day to have this balance that we're talking about. Maybe on that day, do 30 jumping jacks if you're not used to working out. If you are used to working out, find something else to do that's different from what you normally do to be in touch with your body on that day. So your physical self, your emotional self, your uh, psychological self, and your spiritual self. Do something for each one of those parts of you on your birthday. Okay. 
And that's going to help bring you back into balance and it's going to help you rejuvenate. And as is most important, as evidenced by this reading right now, it's going to uh, bring the focus back to you and not the externals. Oh, this one just came on out. So we'll see what it's, oh, 10 of pentacles. Yes. And so the result of you taking this advice is not only will there be happiness in your home, and I feel very much like I need to say that for those of you who identify as uh, people who you don't take care of yourself because you're so busy taking care of everybody else. You feel as though you are obligated to be there for others and that you don't set enough boundaries around making sure you have self-care time and habits. Um, but doing this is going to help you bring more happiness, joy, balance, peace into the home because you're going to be happier and healthier, more balanced, more peaceful and more joyful. And it's also going to result in you functioning better in whatever kind of work it is you do, whether it's work within the home, taking care of that family, or it's work outside of the home in a traditional sense, or it's creative work that you do. But you need this time. You need this rest and rejuvenation time. This, um, and that's not even the, the word. It's not rest and re rejuvenation only, though that might be part of it. But you need to take a time out from fighting and doing and get into just being. That's what your higher self wants for you for your birthday. Self-massage. Oh, also you guys, um, I don't know if you got 40 bucks, but if you do, my sister gave me, my baby sister uh, for my birthday sent me a very unexpected gift that I think costs around 40. I didn't go and look, but my uh, significant other recently had thought about getting the same exact gift for my sister and her husband. So it's ironic that she ended up, uh, you know, he was going to get it for them for Christmas. Uh, and we ended up doing something different, but it's funny and ironic that um, she ended up getting it for me for my birthday. Just one month later, my birthday is January and Christmas, as we all know, is December, but um, it's a massager. It's a self massager. And so, and I don't even know if it actually counts as a self massager um, because you, I, I don't do any of the work. <laughs> like I put it on, it's plugged in. I hit the start button and any number of settings that are on there. And this thing is freaking amazing. 40 bucks, maybe 45. And that's, if you choose to get that for yourself, that is the self-care that you can continue beyond your birthday with ease. You can even have that thing doing its business on you. Cause that's what it feels like. Y'all, it feels illegal. It feels like it should be illegal, <laughs> but you can have that thing on and doing what it does while you do your work. Now, maybe not in the office if you work in a traditional, you know, setting. Does anybody anymore? Actually, I'm, you know, I just remember with us being post pandemic, everybody might be working from home now. I don't know. I'm a creative artist. I work from home unless I'm on set for something. But anyway, uh, check it out. It's on Amazon. I will try to put a link to it in the uh, bottom of this video so that if you want to uh, take a look at that, you can. But I'm pretty sure it's like $45. Um, but yeah, this self-care is being called for for your birthday. Uh, you identify as fighting spirit, but I, your guidance is to take a little bit of a break from being that fighting spirit or for feeling as though you have to fight from feeling as though you have to push forward, persevere, be resilient. Let yourself let go for a little bit and take care of yourself. And the result is going to be happiness and balance. And balance, not imbalance. Happiness and balance. All right, group three, uh, two, two, y'all are two, y'all are two. I'm aware. Um, That is what I have for you today. Thank you for being here. And I will see you in my next one. Hello, group three. Welcome to your reading. So you guys were um, drawn to this reading today, uh, guided in by the beauty sleep card from Vanessa Samina's Wild Muse Oracle deck. Or you were attracted to the Rose Quartz Crystal, this very shaped and polished rose quartz crystal that my boyfriend gave me um, a few months ago as a gift out of the blue. He was just like, hey, I know you like crystals and stuff. So I saw this one and got it for you. And I was like, oh, babe, that's so sweet. Um, 
It is the least raw of all of my stones. <laughs> we'll put it that way. Of all of my crystals, it is the most uh, presented for commercial sale. Okay, so we are looking today at what your higher self hopes that you receive for your next birthday. Now, uh, this is being posted on March 2nd. Uh, and so you might have a birthday coming up this month that this will apply to, or even later this year. For some of you, you have already had your birthday for this year. Um, but you can still get insights from this reading about what your higher self hopes that you get next year on your next birthday. So let's see what comes up. Oh, right away. We have a card. We have the page of pentacles. Interesting. Page of pentacles came up in group two as well. Hmm. And I have shuffled between readings. Hmm. What does group two's higher self want them to receive on their next birthday? Group two's higher self. We got the queen of wands. Very interesting. Group two. You know, if you were drawn to group two, like if you had a hard time choosing between two and three, you might want to go... After you've finished listening to this one, you might want to check out group two's reading also, because in addition to getting this page of pentacles, group two also got a wands card right behind it. It was nine of wands, though, not queen of wands. So, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, you guys might, yeah, if you felt that you couldn't choose between the two messages or the two readings, there might be messages for you in group two as well as this one. Okay. Um, group three's higher self. What would group three's higher self like them to receive on their next birthday? Six of wands, lots of wands energy for you today. Group three's higher self. What does group three's higher self hope that they receive on their next birthday? And the high priestess. Very, very, like I, I'm feeling, you know, Right off the bat, I'm feeling a lot of double energies here. Um, and the fact that we've got wands back to back, we've got wands twice here, you know, which is not in and of itself like, ooh, whoa, you know, amazing. But we have wands twice here and then also getting queen of wands along with high priestess together. I feel there's a, the, a double hit there of female mystical energy. Or feminine, I should say. Feminine mystical energy. With both of those being in this reading. So, group three. You got beauty sleep bringing you... Oh, and look! There's a, a fairy. So, there's more feminine mystical energy there. In this beauty sleep card, you see there's a fairy that's casting some kind of, hopefully, good spell on her. It looks like a pretty benign fairy, but, you know, you never know. <laughs> you never know. All right. So, yeah. So the first thing that's coming up for me for you guys with this reading and is the, um, the clear presence of so much feminine mystical energy. And then on top of that, we do have six of wands here. And Page of Pentacles. You guys, I feel as though what your higher self, and look at this. Oh my gosh. And then on top of that, <laughs> sorry, I'm just, it's, I'm taking it all in at once and there's so much going on. But these three heads are all pointing in the same direction. This one's writing. This one was reading. This is all connected. And in case you're listening and not looking, let me say that better. Queen of Wands is writing or drawing. Feels like writing. In the beauty sleep card, she was reading before falling asleep. And then, of course, High Priestess has a book, right? There's a message here for you guys around wisdom. A 
I, I know. Yes. Okay. Got it. All right. So I feel as though several of the people who chose this pile are having a birthday that you might be, um, what's the word? Resistant to. For instance, if you're 29 and you're about to turn 30, <laughs> God, I'd kill for those days again. Or if you're, you know, 47 and you're about to turn 48, which means you're about to be closer to 50, you know, or if you're in your 60s and you know you're getting closer to 64, 65, whatever the thing is, or even if it's just you're going from, um, from 30 to 31, I'm getting the feeling that here with you guys, there is this sense of needing to be happy that you're having another birthday. The gift that your higher self ha wants for you is the feeling of um, that to still be alive is an achievement, that you have continuously grown and gotten better with your age. You know, the concept of wine getting better with age, you know, fine wine relationships get better with age, hopefully most of them, you know. And I don't necessarily just mean romantic relationships, you know, like that person that's like your, your best friend or she's like your sister or she's your soul connection, whatever it is. And the longer y'all know each other, the closer you get, you know. For me personally, that was more of a thing that happened in elementary school than as an adult. But, you know, that person that's like, the longer you know each other, the more you love each other. Actually, I actually do have one person like that in my life. But the message that I'm getting in all of our cards are female. Yeah, this is definitely around your feminine energy. Uh, there's an aspect of female mysticism here. The... um the importance of female feminine wisdom. I keep saying female. Please forgive me. Okay. I, I listen, I'm old. And so I'm trying to do a good job of making sure I use the right nouns and pronouns. But every time I'm saying female, please know that I am meaning feminine. All right. Um, you guys, there is a clear message here around the feminine aspect of yourself, whether you are male or female yourself or uh, non-binary. And um, really looking at your aging with reverence, looking at feeling as though you're getting older is a good thing. Seeing it as like it's a crowning achievement. Look, she's even got this queen of wands even has a crown on her head. And with your prolonged time on earth, the continuation of your life, you become more and more wisdom. And your victory is in the living. Your victory is in continuing to live. Your victory is in the fact that life has not broken you. Because there are some people who are beat the fuck down by life. But that is not you. You are that person who has learned as you've lived. You assess situations. You take from them that which you can then make use of for yourself as well as for those who you love. You share. And if you aren't inclined, if you haven't been inclined to share the wisdoms that you've gained over time, I feel very strongly that your higher self wants you to start doing that that you are being encouraged to start sharing these wisdoms and insights that you have gained over time, over the length of your life, the course of your life with others. <clears throat> but most importantly, to feel just proud, so proud of yourself for the woman that you have matured into. For some of you, you may be... um and again, I'm saying woman, but the person that you have matured into, I feel like the reason why this keeps coming through me as woman is not just that we've got so much female energy, feminine energy here in these cards, but also because historically speaking, women struggle more with the idea of getting older than men do. And it's because of how 
uh, society, at least our Western society here in America, um, receives the older woman compared to how it receives the older man or the words around being a mature woman versus the words around being a mature man. So that is probably playing into my tendency to focus on this being a message for women to really just love the fact that they are continuing to age and that they are continuing to get better with age. But the message is not just for women. It's for anybody who's in this pile today who feels as though they have struggled with the idea of um, either this next birthday coming up or future birthdays. When I was much younger than I am now, I used to say, openly say, this is going to sound ridiculous, please don't judge me, that I was going to be dead by 45. Now, it wasn't that I was planning on committing suicide or anything like that. It's just that I thought 45 was as far as I was willing to go. (laughs) To me, 45 felt old. And the message coming through today, you know, is that your beauty as a human and the beauty in your feminine aspects, your feminine self will not just continue to be there as you get older, but they will improve with age if you allow yourself to not fight that age. You will graduate into the wise woman of your clan or family or friend group if you haven't already. There is victory in the fact that you have lived so long and learned so much. And as I said before, not been beaten down by what life has thrown your way. Because for some of you, life has thrown some really shitty shit your way. You know, but you kept going. And you're doing it with a smile. Do it with a smile. If you haven't been able to smile, let this be your message to feel good about. Don't think of it as, oh, life has done so much to me. And be bitter about it, sad about it, angry about it, scared, feel like you can't cope. No, you are a person that can cope. You are a person who has coped. You are a person who has come through and overcome so much. And that should make you smile. That is something for you to be proud of. You have things to share with others. You might want to consider writing them down. If you aren't someone who uh, has been journaling, start journaling. If you are someone who's been journaling already or you're about to start journaling, think beyond just writing down what you've experienced, but also think in terms of passing it on to the next generation of your family. So like in my, and particularly those who you feel very, very close with so that they can learn from your life. I don't have children and I've always known that I didn't want to have children. Um, I've always known that it's very strange, but I've always known that. And my, one of my sisters has twin nieces. I talk about them often. I especially talk about the one that gave me this show that's here in every single reading that I do. Hi, darling. I love you. But, um, whatever I have, Whatever I've learned, whatever I can pass down, it is going to the next generation of my family through them, even though I don't have children. For you, it could be that you don't have children or you don't want children and you don't even have nieces or nephews, but maybe the, maybe you are a teacher. Maybe you feel called to teach, but the next generation needs to hear from you about your life. That's a definitely part of what I'm getting here. You are special. You are important. You are needed. Regardless of what age it is, you are about to become. So write it down or find some other way to share it. I'm definitely getting the sense of sharing your wisdom, sharing your magic, sharing your wisdom and insight, your your magic with those around you, those that come after you. You know? Absolutely. 
this life that you've lived, reflect on it. Reflect on this life that you've lived objectively and let yourself see not only what all you have already done, but what all you can still do. I definitely feel like your higher self's message to you is to look forward to this birthday, celebrate yourself, celebrate every birthday that you have coming, celebrate the fact that you are getting older instead of feeling bad about the fact that you're getting older. And see how you can start to pass on that which is your life to those who are going to come after you or who have already come after you. Tap into your um, divine energy, sorry, your uh, divine feminine energies of wisdom, of intuition, of peace, of openness, of vulnerability, of love. Know that you are in at your core. Every piece of you is a magical being. There's so much, so much inside of you. And be prepared to celebrate that with others after you celebrate it with and for yourself on your birthday. Wow. Yeah. I'm very personally touched by this message because, you know, I, I just, I know that a lot of people as, as we get older, we tend to worry that it's too late for us to do something, whether it's something we've dreamed of doing or the idea that it's just too late for us to do anything at all because maybe we took a traditional path and didn't uh, step outside of our comfort zone or didn't step beyond which was expected of us by other people. So I'm also getting for you, try something new. Let yourself, you know, if you want to have that feeling of youthfulness, you don't have to lean into, oh, well, I'm an old lady now because Sean said, you know, for me to appreciate the fact that I'm getting older. No, I'm just saying that you getting older is not you being dead. (laughs) <laughs> and so add to that, add to the celebration of you and all that you are and all that you have become over all of the years that you've lived, add to that, allowing new things to come to you or seeking them out, seeking out new things, new endeavors, new um hobbies, you know, just try something. It doesn't even have to be something that you stick with forever. It can be a one day thing. I'm getting that for you, you know. On your birthday, maybe like if you've never run run or ridden a bike in a marathon or, um, you know, gone skiing or even just rollerbladed or done paintball, something fun, something to help connect you with that child that is still inside of you despite getting older and being fine with getting older. That part of you that likes to have fun, have fun on your birthday, celebrate your birthday, celebrate that it is happening. Okay, before I leave you guys, I do want to pull for you from the Believe in Your Own Magic Oracle because I feel like there might be one more thing. This is upside down. One more thing. For me to share with you before we say goodbye. Additional messages for group three, please. Do we have additional messages for group three? Yes, that beauty sleep. And I'm seeing, you know, again, this beauty sleep. There's a, I feel like part of your message, a big part of your message, in addition to the um, feminine mysticism and the divine feminine and letting yourself be in touch with those parts of you. Also eternal youth. Eternal youth. And the best way, one of the best ways I should say, no, no, no. The best way to continue to feel youthful, no matter how old you get, is to let yourself experience and try new things. Be a beginner again. And to have the energy to do that, you're going to need that beauty sleep, right? (laughs) Take care of yourself. Eat well. Drink lots of water. And get good rest. 
but keep learning. Keep learning, keep learning. Okay. Additional messages for group three that the higher self wants to, their higher self wants to share with them around their birthday. Oh, okay. Thank you. Additional messages for group three, please. Do it for you. Damn. Do it for you. And I actually feel like you have a second one. Slow down and celebrate yourself. Shut the front door. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't make this up. Slow down and celebrate yourself. Do it for you. That's what your higher self wants for you for your birthday. Celebrate yourself in all the years that you've lived and all the years yet still to come. Embrace that you've got this birthday coming. Don't push it away. Don't resist it. Oh God, I just feel so much love for you guys right now. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Oh my God, I feel so much love for y'all right now. Okay, all right. Let me go before I make a fool of myself on this video. <laughs> That's what I've got for you today, group three. Thank you for being here and I will see you in my next one.